The great friend of Turner's youth was the watercolorist Thomas Gerton, born the same year, 1775, who after a brilliant early career died tragically in 1802 at the age of 27. In the second half of the 1790s, these two young men were jointly hailed as the rising stars of the British School of Landscape Art. Critics frequently compared them to one another, often, uh, usually in fact, to the detriment of Turner, who was uh, considered to be more industrious, but less original uh, than his rival. If you like, you can make your own comparisons in the Courtauld uh, uh, show downstairs. These two watercolor views of Dur Durham can help us understand, I think, why Turner was regarded as the less adventurous of the two artists. Not only is he following uh, Gerton's lead uh, uh, compositionally, uh, uh, but uh, the, uh, uh, the Gerton also displays far greater kind of boldness in terms of its coloring and also in terms of its handling than Turner dared uh, even to attempt uh, at this date. Many years later, he was reported to have remarked that had Tom Gurton lived, I should have starved, which is probably apocryphal and almost certainly inaccurate, uh, and yet perhaps not entirely without some foundation in truth. In any event, Turner's engagement with Gurton's art changed dramatically in character after the latter's death. Now, instead of competing with his friend, it became Turner's task to confirm his immortality by demonstrating that, like all great art, Gerton's landscape watercolors were a gift that kept on giving, even after their creator had breathed his last. For Turner, the premier example in Gerton's case was the White House at Chelsea which in the decades after the young watercolor's death came to be admired as the picture which most eloquently encapsulated his ability to produce the most powerful and faithful effects of nature by ordinary and simple means. That's a contemporary description of this picture. In this case, a broad sunset panorama, entirely free of dramatic incident, centered around nothing more nor less than a humble white cottage that casts its reflection onto the flat expanse of the River Thames. Not only does the White House capture the mood of poetic transience that suffuses the scene as a whole, but since Gerton has described its form by leaving this area of the paper virtually unpainted, in the most understated way, the House draws attention to both the economy and the virtuosity of the creative process which has brought this wonderfully expressive landscape into being. Turner returned to Gerton's inve invention, not once, not twice, but several times uh, over the course of his career, and without ever trying to conceal his source.